All right, so good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and welcome. So this is the beginning of lesson 8.6, okay? This lesson is gonna be split into two pieces. Um, we're gonna cover uh, factoring, uh, what's called um, the X's without an A, and then we're gonna be factoring with an A, and I'll explain that in a bit. So this, just know that this is part one, Part two will be posted in a little while. And then ladies and gentlemen in class, this is gonna be split up in a two day lesson as well, okay? Because it's very important for you guys to grasp this first aspect before I move on to the next. Factor trinomials. Um, essential question, why is knowing your multiplication tables the key to factoring? Okay, for some of you that struggle with that, this is gonna be a big key aspect for you. And then um, there are four topics this week and there are gonna be eight total due by Sunday, okay? so. Last week was the first week we're doing it. This is week two. Homework is on Alex. Please get it done. There's gonna be two homework assignments this week along with the two Alex. Um, in class, we're still gonna be moving on towards uh, doing bell work with quizzes. But ladies and gentlemen, if you wanna give this a try, you can. Um, so just remember the factoring part out, what we had talked about here. Uh, what is the greatest number I could factor out of both of these? It would be five. And then I can factor out an X and a Y from each one. If I did that, ladies and gentlemen, four X is left on this, and then it's gonna be plus three. Okay, so there's that one. On this one, we had talked about making sure you guys factor by grouping, okay? And I should have not put that over there. So this one here, I could factor out a negative seven, okay? And if I did that, I'd get R plus two, and then if I factor out of here, I have a T, an R, and a three. So I got a three, an R, and a T, and I factor that out, then from here I would have an R, and I would have a plus two. Okay, and then remember you combine it together, so I'd end up with three R T minus seven, and then it was gonna be R plus two. All right, simple as that. Same thing with this one. Okay, when you factor this one out, uh, the same setup would be as follows. If you guys tried this at home, please understand what you're doing. An R and a 4 are the greatest common factors. So it would be Q plus 2, and then this would be a 3, and it would be Q plus 2. Combine these together, and that's it. Okay, so the big key thing for you guys to remember is when you're factoring by grouping, Okay, is that you're looking for a greatest common denominator, okay, or a greatest common factor in relation to all of those. We're going to get into um, expressions and rewriting them and identifying things in ways. So we've multiplied binomials using the, the FOIL method. Now we're going to factor trinomials in this form without an A and this form with an A, and that's what I'm talking about when I mentioned earlier in the video. Part one is going to be this first step. Okay, so let's talk about what a quadratic equation is. All right, on your notes, you should have what that is. Please make sure you highlight and annotate your notes. And if you need to, please make sure your book is open to 531. Okay, that might help a little bit with some of the illustrations. So factoring comes down to basically like this, okay? You guys have all been presented with factors like this. And what happens is, is that we're gonna go from this form of an equation. Now, we are gonna take this and we're going to here. So you guys are using the FOIL method before. We are multiplying this out, or you would use uh, the box method, okay? Some of you like the box method. And you would factor this out. So I'd put an X and a two, X and a four. You'd multiply it out and you would get this answer. Now we need to go backwards and we need to come back to here. Now this is a bunch of, mom this is a beautiful little illustration of what math people like to present to you, but let me give you guys kind of a, a little tidbit. Um, what I want you to do is write this down in your notes. If you were in class, we started the day actually with a worksheet. And a worksheet that kind of helped us with what we call the diamond method, okay? So what we're gonna do is the diamond method is sit, simply set up like this, okay? Uh, it can be the diamond or for us, it's an X. The reason it's a diamond is some people uh, connect them all like this, okay? And they create a diamond shape and we're not gonna do that, okay? So we call it, we're gonna call it the X method. All right, so what you're doing is, is you're going to take, and so on your notes, if you please write an X like this, and then you need to put a C here and a B there, okay? So what that means is, remember, if you guys look on your notes above it, 
there is an A, which is not represented here. Technically it is, it's the number one. And then there's a B and a C. So the formula is AX squared plus BX, okay, plus C, right? So what is our C value? Here's our B value, and eventually when we get to it, our A value. Now our A value is actually one, and we'll come back to that, but we're not worried about it at this point. So what you do is you have to um, show you the trick for this, is that when you're looking at this, you take your C value right here, and you plug it up here. And then you take your B value, which is seven, because it's the number in front of the X, and you place it right here. Now, one big key aspect, as you know, oops, not B, sorry. You don't put B, you put the number seven. Okay, so what we also need to note is there are two plus signs here. So since there are two plus signs, I know these are gonna be two positive numbers, okay? It's a very key important aspect I had mentioned to you guys when we were doing um, special products and multiplications and everybody's asking, why are we doing this? The reason is, is I need you to remember and think about when you see two positives, that you're gonna have two positive numbers here. Okay, so what it is, here's the trick. What two numbers multiply together, okay, to make this number up here? And then when you add them, they'll get this number here. So you have to think of your factors, okay? So for example, what two numbers can multiply into 12? Well, your factor trees are as follows, okay? So this is what you guys need to think about. This is why it's important for you to know. So for 12, your factors out would be one and 12, of course. Then your next ones would be uh, two and six, okay? Because two times six is 12. Then you have three and four, okay? Is there anything else besides these three that you could do? The answer is no. So now what you have to ask is, here are your answers. Now, when you add them together, your result needs to be seven. So what are our two terms? This one right here, because this is eight, this is 13. So ladies and gentlemen, your two answers are three and four. All right, so great, we figured this out. Now what does that mean? Well, what it means is that you have found your solution. So if I wanted to factor these out, instead of going through the rigmarole and doing some type of crazy math, it's going to be x plus three, x plus four. So what you do is you take these two, you drop them down into here, and then ladies and gentlemen, that is our answer. Okay, if you do the math on it. Okay, I'll show you the math, the box method. X plus three, whoops. So if I did the box method here, okay, setting this up, that's a three, that's a four, that is x squared, that is three x, four x, and 12. If I add them all together, x squared, three plus four is seven x plus 12. I got the same answers I got up there. So what you're doing is, is you're using this method here, okay, you have to figure out what two numbers multiply together to make the C value, which is the end, and then when you add them together, they make the bottom number, okay? So let's focus on this one now. All right, so same setup, okay? We have 20 on top, and we have a nine down here. It's two positives. Please put the two plus signs, okay? It's very important that you do that so you understand what you're looking at, especially when we get to negatives, okay? So what two numbers multiply into 20? So let's break 20 down. Okay, it would be one and 20, of course. Next one would be two and 10, we can do that one. Uh, three, no, four and five is a, pot, is a go. And then ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna stop there because four plus five equals nine. So my answer is here, x plus four, x plus five. That is the fastest way to factor. Okay, so work on this real quick. Okay, hopefully you get, write this down if you have any questions. Remember, C value, which is the end, goes up here. The B value, which is in the middle, okay, goes down on the bottom. Do these two, please. All right, 
set these up. Hopefully, please make sure you guys on a serious note, pause the video, okay? So that way you're working on these. So 24 set up, 11 down here. This would be nine and 10, okay? So what two numbers multiply together? So for 24, all right, this one's more, it might be more complicated for some of you. Uh, I'm not gonna do one and 24, because that's 25. Two and 12, and then we have, can three go into here? Yeah, three and what, eight? Bingo. Okay, multiply together, add them, there you go. Okay, because what we're doing is we're just doing kind of a little trick to, to bypass some of the other math on it. All right, so same thing over here. The numbers multiply by nine, you get nine times one. If you were to add those two together, you'd get 10. So my answer is plus nine and plus one. And there you go. Okay, simply enough. Hopefully you guys understood this now in the homework. There'll be plenty more of these on the activity sheet that I'm gonna pass out that most likely is gonna be graded, okay? There'll be tons of these. There's about 18 examples to get you guys in the flow of understanding what you're doing and the process behind it. All right, so now we're gonna do where B is negative and C is positive, okay? So what we have to talk about on this, okay, is you're gonna do the same thing. Remember, it is uh, C on the top, B on the bottom. This is multiply. Okay, and this would be add. All right, so knowing what your two, the two values are going to be. So now though, we have a running into a problem. So if you guys remember correctly, okay, we had talked about this before. How, if I have a negative here, okay, and a positive here, then what are the values of these two numbers going to be? Well, ladies and gentlemen, they are both going to be negative. Okay, so they're both negative values because negative times a negative is what? Positive, okay? You can't, a negative times a positive is still a negative, okay? So in this case, if this is negative here and this is positive, that means I got two negative values, okay? So let's work on this first one. So I got a 27 and a negative 12, okay? You would write it down just like you see it because remember we had talked about what is the B value? It's the number that's in front of it, okay? So it's a negative 12. So what two numbers multiply together to make 27? Remember, this is a two negatives here. So we would have one and 27, that's way too high. Uh, two doesn't go in there. Uh, three, does three go into this value? Uh, nine times three is 27. And if I were to put a negative in front of these, they'd both be what? 12. So my answer is, oops, was that wrong? It'd be x minus 3, because that's how I have it written right here, and x minus 9. There we go. So let's think about it. Negative 9 times negative 3 is a positive 27. If I were to do the FOIL method, I have negative 3x and a negative 9, which added together would be a negative 12x. Okay. Hopefully you guys see and understand that philosophy. Okay, so same setup, okay? We have a, sorry, I keep making my x's too small. Uh, you guys might run into that philosophy, that problem as well. Okay, so I have up here a 12, negative eight, and we know it's gonna be a double negative. So what two values of 12, all right, what would be the values of 12 that we'd split off? Uh, we could go one and 12 again, uh, two and six. Oh, there we go. So two and six together, negative eight. Okay, so knowing from that, ladies and gentlemen, x minus two, okay, and then x minus six. All right, a majority of the class actually for this lesson is going to be that worksheet. Once we get into this area, it should we should be going pretty quickly on here. All right, you guys, please go ahead and try this one. All right, like I said before, set it up, please. Okay, so I have a 21 on top, negative 22 on the bottom. Well, what two negative numbers would be make this? Well, it gives right away, there's no way it's gonna be anything but 21 times one, okay? So 21 times one would be 21, add them two together, it'd be negative 22. So my value would be x minus 21 
and x minus 1. All right, this one over here, same setup, okay? 28 and 8, negative 11. All right, so I know it's a double negative. So knowing that, ladies and gentlemen, you have to find out, okay, what numbers or values. So 28, let's think about that one. It would be 2 and 14. 3 does not go into that. No, that's 24. And then, but uh, 4 does. 4 and 7 does. And so there we go. 4 plus with 11. Now, I put a plus sign, but remember, it's basically it's two negatives. We're just trying to find the numbers, okay? But when you put it on here, that's when you know what the value is, okay? So it's 4. Um, it would be 4 and 7, so I know I have X. Or it's not X. Sorry, by the way, I keep writing X. It should be M. And I think on the other ones, I made that same mistake. But, um, and I know you guys will probably see, see the same thing. Okay, so yes, it should be W. I'm sorry, I apologize going through this whole video. I've probably done it completely wrong, the values, but I'm just so used to putting X in like you guys are that I'm not gonna mark you wrong. But um, on your homework, if you've done this already, please go ahead and go back through because I didn't realize it till right now. All right, please make sure the variables are correct. All right, this should be M, so I apologize. How bad did they do it? Oh, those were X. Okay, sweet. So it's just this one. This should be M as well. Okay, so just fix that real quick. My apologies. All right, so knowing that, hopefully some of you may have picked up on that. So there would be the values. Okay, so we know the simple setups. Now the third example. When C is negative, which C is the back value, remember it's, it is uh, x squared plus bx plus C. So see when they flip plus, that means you know that what value, if they put a negative in front of it, is C. So remember the setup, okay? This would be C up here, B down here. This is multi, okay, and this is add. So you don't have to write this part every time, just remember the concept, okay? So remember the value is the C is a negative 18. This is a three. So if this is negative and this is positive, then what I'm gonna have, ladies and gentlemen, is one of these values is gonna be positive and the other is gonna be negative. Now, the reason I like to write it like this, okay, is to know that if you put the positive value here, it's gonna be something minus a number and it's gonna equal this, okay? So we're looking at, all right, up here, this is gonna be a higher number. So let's talk about that in a second. So what two numbers multiply together to make 18, but when you subtract them, you get three. Okay, so here's the caveat. Here's the change. That's a plus negative. So let's talk about this real quick. This, of course, would be 18 and one. All right, and then uh, we'll do, go, let me write it the other way. One and 18, okay, and then the next values would be two and nine. And then I have three and six. Now, if I were to take and subtract these two values, three minus six, I would get what? Negative three. Am I on the right track? Yes, I am. Okay, so what you guys need to know though is we have our two values that are gonna equal this, but up here it'd be six minus three. Six minus three equals what? Three. Okay, so this is the one that might catch some of you off guard and will be tricky, but remember, we're looking for two values. So mine would be x plus six, and then your other value is gonna be x minus three, and there's your answer, okay? So we could fact if we factor it out, this is what we should get. If we multiply this, this would be a positive six x, that would be a negative three x, six minus three is in fact three. So we know we've done it correct. Now on this one, here's another caveat, okay? So what we have is, remember we had talked about making sure you guys put it in the correct context, okay? Use all the signs, negative 20. And then what's in front of this that's not written is a negative one. So there's a negative one, okay? So what two values multiply together to make negative 20, but when you subtract them, they're gonna end up being a negative one, okay? So let's talk about that, so 20. Okay, we would have, again, one and 20, two and 10, and then we don't have three, but we'd have four and five, okay? So if I were to subtract these values from each other, 
Put that equation in right there, four minus five, you'd get what? Negative one. So ladies and gentlemen, your answer here, four and five. So hopefully you guys see this, okay? If you guys look at it, it would be, and this is how it, some, this is why I want you to set it up like this. Because four minus five equals what? Negative one, okay? The equation's going like this, all right? So hopefully you guys can understand that and see that. So we know we have to set up x plus four, and then it's gonna be x minus five, okay? So there's your setup. If you were to multiply this out, okay? You have negative 20, a negative five, and a, negative, uh, and a positive four, so you guys would know your setup would be negative one. So here's where also you guys need to make sure you have your multiplication tables correct and your addition subtracting when it comes to factoring, okay? If you have to double check your work, by using uh, the box method or FOIL method, please do, okay? Um, because the biggest key factor for you guys is to understand that if you make a mistake somewhere along the line, when you double check your work, you'll see and you'll find your mistake. All right, so what I want you guys to do is please work on these two. All right, last ones, guys. Last ones for this lesson, I believe. Yep, last one's for this lesson. All right, so for part one, same setup, okay? You know it's gonna be negative 48 and a positive 13, okay? So if you have that, we know we're gonna have some number out here that's gonna be positive, and we're gonna be subtracting a number because of that. And so here the setup would be negative 24 minus two, and it's gonna be positive minus, okay? So let's see what two values they would be. So with 48, okay, it's, the larger they get, sometimes the more complicated. Uh, one and 48, I'm not doing that. You have two and 24. Um, do I have a three? No. Uh, do I have, wait, do I have a three in here? Let me look real quick. Let me grab a calculator. Because I cannot remember. I think there is. All right, so 48 divided by three. And you get, ooh, you do. All right, so three and 16. So that's why it's important to know your multiplication tables. Because I would have skipped that one, went to four and 12, and I've been like, uh-oh, I'm in trouble. So no, if I go from two to 24 and four to 12, and if I were to subtract these, I would get eight. Subtract these, I get, uh, what would that be? 22. So you know there's, I'm missing a piece in the middle. So ladies and gentlemen, if I subtract these two from each other, okay, this would actually be negative three, plus 16 would be what? 13. So I know this has to be the 16. I know this has to be the three. So my answer is going to be Y, I almost put an X again, plus 16, Y minus three. Okay, hopefully you guys saw that example and you understood why I did it this way. All right, same with over here, negative 24. All right, so if we know we have a negative 24, let's split it off. We got two and 12, uh, three and eight, right? So if I got three and eight would be one, uh, four and six. So there, that looks like it would be one. Four, if I put a negative in here, I would end up with what? Negative two. So knowing that, this has got to be the four, this has got to be the six, x plus four, x minus six. So there's uh, one of the quickest ways to do it. Okay, so if you guys have any questions about this, please come see me in class. We can go over it. I'll give you guys the worksheet that we had as well. If you missed um, Monday, or if you missed Tuesday, or even possibly Wednesday, if you came in on, if you missed Tuesday, but you came in on Wednesday, I still have the worksheet. I will still give it to you because there's extra practice on this diamond just to get you guys familiar with the setup. Because if you can do this, then this part's easy. Watch part two that's coming up in a little bit. Otherwise, uh, start working on the homework. I will have a lot of questions on here that you guys can answer pertaining to just part A or and then part one and then part two will be coming up in a bit.